Let me tell you something you already know. Let's talk about hitting. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com. The essence to elite, consistent hitting rests on two concepts. Number one, timing. Number two, spatial awareness. This is the simplistic measurement of elite hitters. And I'll tell you why. The essence of hitting comes down to these two points because these are the two weapons the pitcher uses to get the batter out. The pitcher tries to mess up the batter's timing by throwing a pitch fast and the next pitch slow. The pitcher tries to mess up the hitter's spatial awareness. He'll throw one high and throw one low. He'll throw one outside and then he'll throw one inside. What makes an elite hitter elite is this. He's mastered his timing. He's mastered his spatial awareness. On the surface, it's very simple. But for a batter, and especially a batting coach or hitting coach, unfolding the layers of timing and unfolding the layers of spatial awareness, it becomes very tedious. But the good news is, I've done the legwork for you. I've done your homework for you, and I can give you the answers of the deep layers behind timing and the deep layers behind spatial awareness. Okay, let's unfold some of the deeper layers of timing. What is really timing? Before I go on, let me tell you what timing is not. Timing is not the cliche answers, okay, well, when the pitcher shows me his hip, I'll show him my hip. Or when the pitcher lands his foot, I'll land my foot. Let me tell you some things that I've learned from, from long research in the hitting laboratory. What the hitter is really trying to do is to get his brain to get the signal from his eyes about the ball. Let me say this again another way. The hitter needs a signal from his eyes to, to relay it to the brain. So the brain now has the message of what the ball is doing and where the ball is going. What is the ball's next position? What space is the ball going into next? You see, once the brain gets a signal from the eyes, the brain relays the signal to the limbs. So to summarize everything, what is happening is this. The brain is telling the eyes, hey, I need a signal from you. I need a message. Get ready, eyes, to pick up the ball early in the flight path. Once the eyes pick up the ball early in the flight path, it delivers the, the signal to the brain. And then the brain delivers the signal through the spinal cord to the limbs and then the hitter makes his reaction. Now, stay with me. If the brain gets the signal late from the eyes of, of the ball's next position or where the ball's going, then the hitter is going to experience desperation. The hitter's going to experience reluctance. The hitter's going to experience apprehensiveness. And apprehensiveness is poor pitch selection. One of the greatest hitters of all time, Ichiro Suzuki, validates my point. He was quoted as saying this, you can only hit when the information picked up by your optic nerve is processed by your brain and then transmitted accurately to your body. If your eyes can't pick it up, then you can forget about good results. Okay, so having studied timing for over 27 years in the Hitting Research Laboratory, this is what I, I really believe it culminates to. What hitters are really doing, the most important detail the hitters are timing, is the timing of their vision. Now, on the surface, a lot of coaches and players 
may think, okay, I need to see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. I'm not going to explain the details behind that, but let me just tell you from a lot of research, you're on the wrong road. <laughs> you're going to try to see the ball out of the, pit, the pitcher's hand. You are on the wrong road, the wrong side of the road. Truthfully, honestly, when you talk to an elite hitter, they'll tell you they don't see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. And if they do tell you they see the ball out of the pitcher's hand, there's an illusion taking place. And once they're explaining that illusion, they agree with you. They don't see the ball in the pitcher's hand. Well, then what's the answer? Where do you see the ball? It's been explained in science. It's been explained in some of my other videos. But you got to get your eyes in position to see the ball early in the flight path. What assists the players in getting the eyes in position is the pitcher's common denominator. You see, the common denominator is a signal to the batter. It's an indicator for the hitter. Hey, get ready, get ready, get your eyes ready now. Either you just have a sense for this common denominator, which a lot of elite hitters have, or you learn about the common denominator and how to use it to your advantage. And once you know how to use it, and you practice it over and over and over again, repeat it repeatedly, it's a great aid and it makes the timing of the vision extremely easy. I'm not done yet. I got more. <laughs> it's not enough just to know the common denominator as a hitter or as a hitting coach. You see, what starts to unfold to, the, to get the eye and position is this. You have to recognize what is your hitting model? What style of hitting are you, are you hitting out of? My research in the laboratory tells me there are 11 hitting models or hitting styles that you can use. The next thing I factor into helping a player to time his vision accurately is to recognize what tempo do you hit out of. It's either slow medium or medium fast. The next element I factor into this formula or, or equation is this. What is the hitter's visual pattern? Over 27 years of researching this, I've only found seven visual patterns from hitters. Let me define my research. The visual pattern is begins with how does the batter watch the pitcher while the pitcher is getting his signal from the catcher and while the pitcher is going through his windup and delivery. What is the batter looking at? In 27 years of research, when I talk to the elite hitters, I've only had seven answers. I've only had seven answers that repeat itself. One more element, one more element I factor into the equation. It's important for the hitter to understand what is your dominant eye. What eye is dominant? What eye is looking at objects more than the other eye? This is an extremely valuable teaching component. So this is how deep the research I have. And when people say, well, we're still learning about timing, I, so am I, but I've, I've, I've dug into it this deep. When you combine 11 different hitting models, hitting styles, multiplied by two different tempos, multiplied by seven different visual patterns, multiplied by two different dominant eyes, you have a a system that is made up of 308 variations. 308 combinations hitters can hit out of. This is how deep I've studied and unfolded just the aspect of timing the vision.
Does the hitter need to know all 308 variations? <laughs> I don't think so. The hitter needs to know what is his formula, what's his equation, what is his variation. Now, if you're a coach, yes, you would benefit greatly if you know all 308. If you are a scouting director, if you're a minor league director, if you're a general manager, yes. If you're a player development person, yes. Knowing all 308 is critical for your player's development. Now, guess what? Number two on the list for timing is spatial awareness. And you know what? Your spatial awareness is directly linked to the timing of your vision. If you have poor timing to your vision, you're probably most likely going to have poor spatial awareness. And if you have poor spatial awareness, you're going to end up having poor pitch recognition. Having poor pitch recognition translates to this. Low batting average, low slugging percentage, poor on-base percentage, not a run producer. It's time to get released. <laughs> Sadly enough, pitch recognition is huge. Okay, so let's dig into spatial awareness, or I like to call it spatial alertness. And, and this is why, you know, more than just the average awareness where things are, you know, when you're driving your car, you're playing catch with somebody, you're kicking a soccer ball, you're hitting a hockey puck, hitting a tennis ball, you know, on the surface, you know, when you warm up with things, Spatial awareness is spatial awareness. It's, it's in one place and then it's another place. But when we're dealing with hitting at a high, high level, right? This isn't just your average spatial awareness. This is quick spatial awareness. This is hot spatial awareness. When you're dealing with rapid moving objects, the athlete doesn't have much time to react. It's in one space and where it's going to be in the next space. And that's what we're trying to do as hitters, reactive space. So as researchers, as coaches, we want to know how can I teach the hitter to be more sensitive to spatial awareness and, and then after that to develop quick spatial awareness or quick spatial alertness. How do we develop that? As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the spatial awareness hinges upon how successful the hitter can pick up the ball early in the flight path and send the message back to the brain and back to the limbs of the body to make the reaction. But I've, I've dug into the, the spatial awareness concept for a long time, in fact, uh, recently, I spent approximately two years, that's why you heard me say that, two years in studying spatial awareness. Inside those two years, I've tested different methods of how to improve a hitter's spatial awareness, and I came up with some rich concepts. The elementary position of spatial awareness is this. I need to step into home plate and realize I want to control the ball. I'm in home plate. I'm not thinking about my mechanics. I'm not thinking about my elbow. I'm not thinking about getting my foot down. All I'm thinking about as a hitter is the ball, especially when you step into an environment when that ball is, is coming in hot. Here's where I want to control the ball. I want to control the ball in two spaces. We can divide it up like a, like a race, right? The two spaces are this. Every race has a starting line. Every race has a finish line. Where my eyes pick up the flight path, quote unquote, let me say it again, where the eyes pick up the ball in the flight path 
is going to be the starting line. The finish line definitively is going to be the point of contact where the ball meets the bat. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, maybe for the average coach, it is simple. But for a researcher and for someone who, is, who digs deeply into player development, there's a lot of sub-layers you got to look into. When you look at it for two straight years, <laughs> believe me, there are a lot of sub-layers. Part of my researching spatial awareness, I pulled out and experimented with the blurry glasses test. I first started with myself. <clears throat> I wore glasses. I have a heavy prescription. I got I went to the batting cage and I took my glasses off and I began to hit. I can hardly see the ball. But guess what? Because I know the principles and because I was studying and, and, I've, and I, I said, uh, I know the rules to spatial awareness, I can barely see the ball, but yet I can still hit the ball and hit the ball with authority and square it up and create airplanes coming off my bat with, with launch angles. So I said, you know what? Let me try this out on another person who wears glasses. And after I explain the concept to them and they know the idea of spatial awareness and how we can control the starting line and the finish line, point A and point B. And guess what happened? The hitter could hit. In fact, the hitter was actually hitting better without the glasses on than he was with the glasses on. Now, this became very interesting. How do you explain someone who has poor, no, no, poor, poor vision, and they still hit the ball well. It breaks every conventional wisdom that we've heard about, about hitting. You need to have good vision to be a good hitter. You need to, to see the ball well. You need glasses. You need 20-20 vision. 20-10 vision is even better. Well, my research told me that's inaccurate. To take it a step further, I found out this that good hitters actually hardly watch the ball. I have been showing you video examples of this concept where the hitter is barely watching the ball in this video presentation. Okay, so what I needed to do to prove my point with players who had good vision already, I need to somehow blur their vision. So henceforth, I came up with these glasses that have uh, baggies on them, and I blurred the vision. I did different things, different variations of, of blurring the, um, the eyes. I put glaze on top of the glasses, but I found out that these baggies work best. So I distort the hitter's vision, and they understand the hidden concept of spatial awareness, how to control point A, point B. Guess what happens? They hit. They square the ball up. They're sending airplanes out to left center field, right center field, center field. They're creating, they're creating launch angles, and they're not even trying to. And guess what? They can hardly see the ball. That's right, they can hardly see the ball. And as a matter of fact, some players when struggling while, uh, while having good vision, when I, when I blurred the vision, they actually hit better than when they, when they had their vision good and they could see the ball clearly. How does that make any sense? Hitters have good vision, but can't hit. But then suddenly, I blur the vision and another concept of spatial awareness, they begin to hit. This is what I came up with. The reason why 
they began to hit better with the blurred vision was because their focus was now on the ball and the space the ball is moving into. Ready? Next. What space is the ball moving into next? What I believe what was going on when they when their vision wasn't blurred was the excitement, was the the angst of trying to crush the ball. And that excitement and that that the concept is hit the ball as hard as it can overtook them and it detached their brain from having clear spatial awareness and having um, a good idea the ball is in one space and going to another space. They basically got disconnected with spatial awareness. Now, all this research for two years about spatial awareness is, is extremely important now. Now when I go to work with players, before we work on timing, I actually work backwards. I, I asked the player to do a few things that's going to warm up their spatial awareness, to warm up their sensitivity to um, the balls in one space and going to another space. It's actually learning how to flick on a switch in the brain that says, I care more about the ball and where the ball is going and versus turning on the other switch that says, I just want to hit the ball as hard as I can and send it to the outfield. See, that switch doesn't really play well in the game. The elite hitters are using the switch that where they're sensitive to spatial awareness. So much to the point where they, they now have hot spatial awareness or quick spatial awareness. And that plays in the game. That makes them the, the elite hitters. If you stay with me this far, I want to thank you. And I know you share the passion like I have the passion. We're cut from the same cloth. But let me sort of summarize everything, okay? Hitting comes down to two components. Timing and spatial awareness. Are you doing more things as a hitter to master your timing? to master your spatial awareness. These are the two weapons the pitcher has to get you out. It's only logical for you to invest your time into making yourself a better hitter and mastering those two components. When a hitter is sensitive to his timing and his spatial awareness, he begins to have a greater understanding what I mean by the concept of timed hitting perception. I'm a resource for you. One of my resources is my, my online video series, The Best Hitting Drill Ever. <clears throat> this is what I start with every kid, every hand, camp, every hitting session, every lesson I work with. I start with the best hitting drill ever um, information. Next, I have the, the world's greatest hitting formula. This is where the meat and potatoes are for hitting, the timing. It's inside this video series, I explain the common denominator and explain all the 308 variations a hitter can go through to make himself a better hitter in the game when, and understand his timing. Another resource is I travel. I travel to different cities, I do different hitting sessions. I come to visit different uh, travel teams, high school teams, college teams, I speak, not only do I speak, but I work directly with your players to make them better. They don't need to learn all 100, 308 variations. They just need to learn what, what is their best variation that works going to work for them. What is their natural, what is their natural athletic hit, um, disposition? What is their natural uh, hitting tempo and model for them? I'm Dave Kirloff. May the Lord bless you.